Hello everyone and welcome to Jurassic Park Week Series 3 on Victoria's Cantina. This time, Jurassic Park Week is being done in honor of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Simply by watching this video all the way through, you are helping to raise money for breast cancer research. For further details, including how you can further help to raise money, please click on the link below. Today we're taking a look at the Kenner Jurassic Park Series 2 Ellie Sattler from 1994. And to help me complete this review, a little bit later, we'll be hearing from my friend Nick, you may better know as Jurassic Park toy collector JP Carnotaur from YouTube and Instagram. So looking at the packaging here, we have the very classic looking Kenner Jurassic Park card back, which is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it just captures the imagination. It doesn't spell out a scenario from the film. It doesn't tell you what to think about. It just kind of sparks your imagination. And that's what I recall the most from being a kid when I saw this packaging. I just kind of imagine, you know, sunset at Jurassic Park. What's going on out in the jungle? The packaging doesn't tell you what's going on. You use your imagination and then you use the toys to recreate what's going on there. So I absolutely love that. Of course, the packaging says new series two. It's got the blue and white backdrop right behind Dr. Sattler. You get a nice collector card here that has a still from the film and uh, you can see the figure very prominently within as well as all of her accessories. At the back you get a look at other items available in the Kenner Jurassic Park collection including the dino trackers, action figures, some of the smaller dinosaurs, a couple of which were repacked with capture gear. So if you didn't get the dinosaurs right when they came out in 93, all you had to do is wait a little bit longer and you could get them with capture gear. So a cool incentive if you had to wait to get them a little bit longer. You also get some of the bigger dinosaurs on the lower right, the infamous Carnotaurus, Quetzalcoatlus, uh, young Tyrannosaurus Rex, and then some of the vehicles like the Bush Devil Tracker and the Jungle Explorer. You also get some instructions here on how to operate Dr. Sattler's weapon. And interestingly, they did use the Series 1 figure for the image there, as well as the Series 1 accessories. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Dr. Sattler out of the packaging. All right, so here is Series 2 Dr. Sattler out of the packaging. And uh, she looks interesting. Now, I think that the biggest takeaway from this figure is that she looks more like Dr. Sattler than the Series 1 original Dr. Sattler figure did. But she also certainly looks uh, different. I mean, her outfit isn't quite as film accurate in terms of coloration as the original figure was. Uh, but overall, I like what I'm seeing. It's different enough to make you purchase the figure again, but not so different that it doesn't look like Dr. Sattler. The proportions of the figure look good. You can see that her arms are very nice and toned. It seems like she's been working out a little bit. She still has her hair pulled back, but the overall proportions still look really good. They still look fairly lifelike uh, for an action figure in this scale and from this era. It is a different take on Dr. Sattler compared to the original release. The backpack and grappling hook that she comes with are repaints of the exact backpack and grappling hook she came with for the series one release. But luckily she has a new hatchling. So looking at the figure here, um, I mean, I really feel like it has a better likeness to Laura Dern, and that seems to be the consensus across the board, not just with uh, this specific figure, but with any of the Series 2 uh, characters, such as Tim, such as Nedry, and Muldoon, that were redone for the Series 2 uh, releases. Um, I mean, from the profile, it looks like her. The only thing is, it looks kind of like an older version of her, uh, if you will. It just seems like it, the resemblance is there, more so than the Series 1 version. We will compare them in just a second, but it looks pretty good. She's also a little bit more tanned this time around, and uh, definitely has a more stern expression. Uh, maybe you can call her Laura Stern. The hair color is um, kind of this uh, yellowish blonde sort of color. It's a little bit lighter than what we saw before, and it contrasts um, quite a bit with their more sun-kissed a skin tone. So it definitely looks like she's been outside capturing dinosaurs and whatnot on Jurassic Park. The coloration of the outfit, of course, is different. This time the shirt's purple. Uh, the undershirt is still more or less the same shade of blue. And she's got darker pants. The badge is a different color. And uh, so are the shoes and socks. So a um, pretty interesting look. I like how she matched her socks to her undershirt. Nice going, Ellie. And uh, the overall sculpt is good. Just like before, uh, they did a pretty nice job sculpting out all of these details, like the shirt, uh, like the pants. She's still got some sort of a pistol or some sort of a weapon or accessory there holstered on her side. So that is interesting to see. Uh, the belt looks pretty good. Nice texturing on it. 
and another accessory on her other side maybe that's like a little flashlight or something it's kind of hard to say and and the shoes still look pretty good except they're all white now and very clean looking for somebody who's uh, roaming around on isla nublar trying to catch uh, dinosaurs and stuff so that's pretty interesting now in the way of articulation it's a simple 5 poa figure you get a rotation here at the head you can swivel the shoulders all the way around and uh, both of the hips kick up and uh, almost a full 90 degrees there and uh, they also go back as well if you're so inclined <laughs> to have her do that um, overall very simplistic but a very functional figure okay so here's a comparison of the original series one dr sattler along with the series two version of the character like i said the likeness on the series two version looks a little bit more like laura dern but the coloration on the outfit isn't quite as film accurate i mean i don't hate what they did with the outfit for the series two version but to me it's just not nearly as appealing as the series one outfit is and I don't mean that simply in terms of movie accuracy. Just the overall color palette to me isn't quite as nice on the Series 2 release. Something about the purple shirt and the darker brown pants and the white shoes. Uh, I'm just not really feeling that, Dr. Sattler. Not the best look for you. You will also notice that the badges on their hips appear to be the same color. And yeah, I mean, this one definitely resembles Laura Dern more for Series 2, but... Overall, I, I would say that I definitely prefer the Series 1 release. It, just to me overall, it feels like a better aesthetic. But both are solid figures. Uh, if you don't mind the color of the outfit or the more sun-tanned look to her skin, uh, the Series 2 version is definitely a solid release, just as well as the Series 1 is. But if you're a collector of Kenner Jurassic Park, chances are you already have both of them in your collection anyway. So Dr. Sattler comes with a baby Ankylosaurus, which is quite fun because the original Dr. Sattler came with a baby Triceratops. I like that she comes with the Ankylosaurus because it wasn't in the film, so this was the very first Kenner Jurassic Park Ankylosaurus toy. And it's cute, it's fun. I mean, look at that little face. Look at that, it's adorable, precious. Um, I really like it. I mean, it, it really is a baby looking <laughs> ankylosaurus. And I, I love the colors. I love the dark purple on the top, very glossy. And then the more matte and subdued light blue that blends into this uh, more cream color that it has on the very bottom. I, I think that that looks really, really cool. And it's got a nice sculpt uh, overall. And uh, I just love the mouth, how it's open like that. And uh, very cute, very cute, and uh, the JP logo right there, and it stands just fine. You aren't going to have any problems with balancing, of course. Very fun little dinosaur hatchling. Here is the authentic movie collector card. You can see that this is number 55, and it has that blue border around it that's similar to the Series 2 packaging. And in the movie still, you can see Dr. Sattler here with her flashlight. There's Muldoon in the background, and uh, she's searching for Ellen and the kids and about to find Dr. Malcolm. And uh, there's the T-Rex. Uh, paddock there at the back. You can see where it broke out. So that is really cool. Uh, here at the back, personal file on Dr. Ellie Sattler. Her specialty is paleobotany. Her background is a brilliant PhD. In Companion of Dr. Grant shows courage and heroism when danger services at the park. Movie moments. After the T-Rex tirade, Ellie is blown away as she searches through the wreckage left behind. She looks desperately for Grant and the kids, but finds hardly a trace, just footprints leading into the dark jungle. Dino trivia, how long were Triceratops' eyebrow horns? And if you turn it the other direction, no one knows exactly, but the body horn core measures three feet in length, and they would have been even longer with their protective horn covering. Very interesting. Okay, so now to take a look at the weapons and accessories that Dr. Sattler comes with, I'm going to throw it over to J.P. Carnotaur. All right, thank you, Victoria. So let's talk about Ellie Sattler's accessories. Now, the only difference between her accessories from Series 1 and this Series 2 version here are the colors. And that's about it. Everything has the same exact purpose as the Series 1 version did. Now, personally, I like the version of these accessories a little bit better because the colors are more natural. The original grappling launcher was a dark green with a lime green hook and um, a trigger there. And you can see that this one is a more, um, I guess, realistic paint job, even though using one of these against a dinosaur isn't realistic. Um, but it, it looks pretty nice. And you can see here it has a metallic silver paint job. And then the actual hook is orange and so is the trigger. Now the really cool thing about this weapon is that Kenner was kind of bold with releasing this with a figure. Obviously this weapon was not seen in the film and I loved how Kenner got really creative with the weapons and even the dinosaurs, the vehicles, etc. With, uh, with all of their toy lines and um, they definitely didn't disappoint with Jurassic Park. 
And I think it's better that they released Ellie with something like this rather than a generic gun or, you know, something boring like a walkie-talkie, which might actually have been a better pack-in. But it, it was always cool to have something like this as a kid. I used my Series 1 Ellie Sattler's uh, missile launcher as a, like, a harpoon to attach the back of a vehicle's um, bumper so I could recreate the Lost World scene with Eddie. And you can see here that when I press the orange trigger, and I'm going to try to aim at the Ankylosaurus, you can see that it shoots. So let's see if we can get it to hit the Anki. Yep. Yeah, so mine doesn't really shoot that far, probably because it is wrapped around. So let me give it a little bit more string, and we'll try that one more time. All right, so we're back. So uh, I gave Ellie's launcher a little bit more string, so hopefully it'll hit the Anki with a lot of accuracy. So let's try it one more time. There we go. And you can see it actually has a pretty powerful shot as well. It is spring-loaded, so it will go pretty far. And as long as you don't use it too much, the spring-loaded action feature shouldn't wear out too much. The only downside I would say to this weapon itself is because the string is so long, you might actually wrap it around the trigger. So in that case, your missile won't go in, so you just have to keep rewrapping it to make sure that the string doesn't overlap the trigger. All right, so taking a look at Ellie's backpack, you can see here that it kind of looks like a communications device. I think that's the only purpose this backpack really has other than keeping her balance when she's holding onto the missile launcher. Now, if I could just get the camera to zoom properly here, it kind of looks like a maybe a walkie-talkie on the back. That could be a speaker. Those could be some dials that you could use to contact the other members on the island. There's a little pocket there for, I guess, some supplies that you could take out into the field with her. And then we have the antenna, which is, I guess, what really gives it that radio feel. Now, just to show you the difference between the Series 1 backpack and the Series 2 backpack, I have my Series 1 Ellie back here. And the only difference is the color and the antenna. The color for the actual backpack itself and the straps are the same. And lastly, putting Ellie's backpack on is real easy. You can take a look here and see that at the bottom of the backpack, there are several pegs. And then you have several different holes you can put the pegs in. So to put it on her, all you have to do is to wrap the backpack around the top of her there. Make sure the straps are underneath of her arms. And then you can pick which peg you want to plug the um, strap into there. And then I usually go with the second one because it's always easiest. Sometimes you could do a second and then the first one here. Um, in this case, I might be able to get the first one in. It all depends. And it doesn't really matter which pegs you put them in as long as it fits the figure. And that's pretty much it for the accessories. So I just want to thank Victoria for having me on the channel to help her support this great cause. And you can check me out at JP underscore Carnotaur 1203 on Instagram. So thank you guys. And now back to you, Victoria. Thank you so much, Nick, for telling us about Dr. Sattler's accessories and for demonstrating how they work. Be sure to subscribe to JP Carnotaur on YouTube and follow him on Instagram and Twitter. All right, my friends, so that'll do it for this installment of Jurassic Park Week Series 3 on Victoria's Cantina. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to subscribe to the Cantina Chatter Podcast on iTunes. As always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>